uh, I'm already emotional. <laughs> I'm so excited for you guys. When we think about what's happening, the here is the moon uh, going around Earth at 2,289 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. But at the same time, Earth is spinning under it at uh, about uh, 2,000 miles an hour. Uh, so the combination of those two speeds mean that if you're close to the equator, as you are, Paul, you get a longer eclipse because as the... Uh, moon's shadow speeds over earth you're on the fastest part of earth speeding in the same direction and that fortunately <laughs> prolongs the event and you're absolutely right you've been talking about the science i've been hearing wonderful science from lucy green um fantastic yes. poetry uh coming from eric our slew astronomer uh po poetry of a level that i i play everything that he said uh i'd recorded and almost make that into my home um, um, bell when people ring the front door I'd love to hear that uh, that thing all over again because it was just so gorgeous. So, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, stop speaking at uh, totality or around that same time. But in the couple of minutes left, suffice to say, we have a combination plate. It's a magical marriage of science and I won't call it philosophy. Let's call it something closer to, uh, to and, and take this in the right term, please holiness sacredness this is a sacred yes. experience yes. because it's one thing to know that the moon is going around earth we all know that we all know that but it's another thing to look up in the sky and see the actual tick tock clockwork motion of the of the solar system as it affects us now in these final two minutes paul since you've been clouded out of a couple of eclipses one thing to look for and if you're in a place that you, you can see it as a deep partial eclipse look at the light on the earth below sure everybody's staring at the sun but just for the moment don't look at the sun of course you're staring at the sun with eye protection but i mean don't look toward the sun look around you Look at the tables, doing, look at the shadows, look at any buildings, and you'll see that in these final one and a half minutes before totality, the nature of sunlight changes dramatically. It gets more saturated, the colors get deeper, the uh, edges of shadows, instead of having the blurriness that shadows always have because they're being cast by a one-half degree light source, instead, the edges of shadows become sharper and sharper and sharper. Maybe you can even have a camera that shows that, but if you don't, Paul and Trish and uh, all of our SLU team there that have gone through so much work to bring this event. Uh, and you, d you did not chicken out the way uh, I did for the last uh, cloudy eclipse. You went right ahead, thanks to uh, uh, Mike Pellucci, who spends no small amount of time and effort and personnel to bring these to the world. Yes. Bob, I have to stop yes. you there because we are now seeing the diamond ring. It's extraordinary on our live video stream. And th what Bob was talking about, there's this steely, steely blue darkness that's around us. It's incredible. Wow. And look at the and I've just seen Venus. Look at the remaining, Venus, look at Venus, the remaining light before it's gone. Venus has look at the remaining sunlight on, on all earthly objects. And that remaining sunlight is a thing unto itself. Bob, we are at totality. <laughs> <laughs>
seperti yang kita sebut sebagai tidak api kecil tapi Corona itu adalah atmosfer bagian luar dari matahari yang hanya bisa kita lihat kalau terjadi gerakan matahari total.